Hello everybody, welcome to the crucial tiebreaker match of the round of 16 clash between Frankie129 and Strider84. We've each won a game, so that leads us to the tiebreaker match to decide who advances to the quarterfinals. I can tell you that Strider is Swiss and he qualified through the season three official playoffs. Uh, Frankie, on the other hand, is Spanish and qualified through NBB. I believe they both won their groups. Yes. Yes, they both won their groups. So, um, they are here. And Strider won the toss, chose to kick. He's got pretty much the standard Wood Elf team. to dodge, to wrestle, the tree, the leader two catchers, a strip, and a sidestep. It's. I think this is the standard on Blood Bowl 3. I think a tackle would be more standard on tabletop because Amazons exist. But um, as far as Blood Bowl 3 goes, I think this is the typical Wood Elf team and then everything else like you know, changes from this. The Undead, in the previous games, he was staying, he was doing some weird offset thing. Now he's got everything on the LOS, trying to bang down the tree straight away. And also he's fielding all four ghouls. He didn't field one of the ghouls uh, earlier. No solid defense here from Strider. It was already perfect. He doesn't care at all. Gets the full power there off this uh, 2D white block. Three Ds this one for a pal and a stun, and now he gets a two D the tree for a pal. Oh, and there's a there's a player hiding. He's got he's got a player in the Inarian position, but of course the tackler can one two three four five six. You can just move this zombie out of the way. No. Okay, well he gets away with that. I do not like the zombie blitz when you have a block blitz. One, two, three, four, five, six. He could have come back, right? He could have been, could have, could have been back here, and then he can make a kind of cage somehow. We'll have to get the pick up here, I think. I think you have to reroll it just so that you know reduce the chance of failing next turn. Because while there isn't immediate pressure on here. Yeah, he does reroll it. I think that's correct. While there isn't immediate pressure on the ball, like, if you fail next turn, it's a disaster, right? So you have to put in the reroll, I think. Wow. Very exciting. So this has this game with this game being the tiebreaker. Overtime is enabled. So if it's a draw, it will go to overtime. We have to get a winner, which you know you have to say overtime will surely benefit the undead. They've got thirteen players and regen, and obviously other bash team in this matchup. So you know chances are, if it, if it goes it's turn seventeen to twenty four. Wood are down players, and the Undead will have the advantage. But the problem is getting there. Strider choosing a kick will get to defend with all of his players. A, this is a horrible reroll I have to do. I, it's so annoying because you really don't want to have to re-roll it because like you know they're not going to go and get the ball off you this turn like you know you've done the right thing you've you've screened it all off so they can't really get pre good pressure on you but you've just got to re-roll it because you can't you know you can't go to next turn and have oh, just lose 11 percent of the time next turn right but i mean it's happened anyway <laughs> it's happened anyway basically just loses 11 percent of the time next turn Nothing you can really do about it. OK, 
pressure. I mean, he can get pressure on if he just three twos without dodge. <laughs> Outrageous stuff from Strider. So now he's going to rush to base the tackler. Yeah. And he's going to base the other guys as well. Nope. He's going to... Oh my God, he's going to pick it up. Oh my God. Okay, well he can get pressure on and he has got pressure on. <laughs> and he's dodged away. Oh my God. Oh God, it's just an instant loss. I mean, it's not over yet, but oh my god, he's just passed every single roll. Oh, wow. Like, even if he hits him here, he's still just probably lost, hasn't he? That's awful for Frankie. Absolutely awful. Wow. Wow. I would, I, I, do you know what I would have done? I think I would have gone for the 1D on this guy, hoping to like 50% him, and then I could have gone for that, right? I would have tried it on twos. I would have tried it on twos. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have just blitzed this guy and then done it all on 3 2. Okay, so. He, okay, I think he should have assisted with this guy, right? He was free. So he's still in a world of hurt here, even if he makes this. Oh God. What a disaster. What an absolute disaster. So now he just has to recover on the tackler as well. How disgusting is that? I mean, that may that might be like that's the thing about Wood Elves, right? Like you can't really try these plays with Dark Elves because they're not fast enough. It's not just Elves; it, it is Wood. It's not just Edge Two. It is it is specifically Wood Elves, not just Elves. And you can just go away, right? Then it's the yeah, air. Yeah, that's the best way to go. Okay, really lucky scatter for Frankie. I know it sounds stupid to say lucky, in, you know, given anything's happened, but he had to not move this ghoul first, right? He just had to not move this ghoul first. He had to have the pickup from the ghoul. Like, this is not. This is not the way you cannot leave the ball on the ground versus Woodies. But maybe you can, right? There's a couple of 1 in 36s to be rolled here. Maybe 3, 4, you know. There's a few 1 in... But especially the first two. That if they fail, then Frankie's got a chance. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't Frankie's fault, was he? He failed the pickup. <laughs> Not a lot you can do. He failed the pickup and got three plus two plus everybody through. It was ludicrous. Oh, he's leaving the ball on the ground. Well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have tried to pick it up on the go, right? I couldn't believe he. He had this guy. This guy should have done the assist, and this guy should have blitzed, and then he's got the girl to pick it up. Yeah. Okay, he didn't fail either one in 36s. Does go for the scatter. Gets the perfect one. And there you go. Another one in 36. 
So that was three one in thirty sixes that could have spelled not disaster, but for Strider, but a chance for Frankie. But none of those failed. He doesn't really have a chance if he fails the pickup now, even, <laughs> and he doesn't fail the pickup. And yeah. yeah. Looks. God, it's stupid, isn't it? It's not over. Don't say it's over. But, um. It's. Oh my god! Oh my god! He hit the wrestler. The wrestler didn't use wrestle and died. Uh, Frankie was looking for. Oh dear! I mean, he's got to get lucky, right? That means he's got to get lucky. So the way the way he gets lucky is he doesn't use wrestle, and the leader dies. Like he's got he's got to he's got to not he's got to not. Uh, he, like I think he's completely correct to not wrestle there, right? And just hope he gets lucky because at the moment he's just absolutely hundred percent lost, right? Like. As it is, he has lost a hundred percent. So there you go. That's why BB Jock. At the moment, Frankie has lost one hundred percent, and the only way he doesn't lose this game is he gets unreasonably lucky. And one of the ways he gets unreasonably lucky is he chooses not to wrestle and kills that leader thrower. Unfortunately, of course, <laughs> it was Strider that continued to get lucky, and. His player's dead. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I absolutely disagree, baby Jock. I absolutely disagree. I would 100% not wrestle there. I mean, now I'd hope that I was in this position. But if I was in this position, I'm 100% not wrestling. 100%. I would never wrestle there in this position. I'd never, ever, ever wrestle there. <laughs> because you you more likely to lose three nil <laughs> than draw at the moment. <laughs> so you have to recognise that. You have to recognise how terrible this is. You have to recognise how terrible it is, and you have to clutch. You have to clutch for those slivers of equity. And one of the slivers of equity is you just kill his leader thrower then. No, but you can't afford to get unlucky again, as well, right? Like, that's the thing. He's going to have to 1 in 36. I mean, he can do it with the other dancer. He could have done it with the other dancer. Oh, no, he's already blitzed. In that case, no, he's got to do it with the dancer. Does it? Scores. And, uh, I mean, you don't have a sack piece. You just don't have a sack piece. He's elves. <laughs> you don't have a sack piece. You just hope that he fails something. And then, you know, you've got half a chance. Ugh. Can't believe I'm missing. Well, he's got a bribe now, Frankie. He's got a bribe. He's got a cage. A full cage-ish. He just needs to get some removals. On the LOS blocks. And... With a foul. And he's alright. Gets the pal. Does he not stand? No, he does stand for him. So he could, he could, he could what? 
three, two assist foul, maybe three assist foul. The tree. Or he could no assist foul a lineman. You could also technically three assist foul the tree if you wanted. Probably have to, right? You probably have to three assist the foul tree. Three assist foul the tree here. Doesn't feel very good. I guess you could you could you could one assist foul the other one. I mean you've got you've got a foul somewhere. I hope you get lucky. This is like so grim for Frankie. So absolutely grim. Mm. I don't know why he didn't like the cage, he was it. Stride will do here. He generally plays quite conservatively. It was funny actually to see him go so so in on that other turn, first turn. Just screening. Screening and punching and screening, but that's all he has to do, right? He doesn't have to do any crazy strip ball nonsense again. He's he's got the win as it stands, right? Even if even if Frankie can like get through the elf screen and get a touchdown on turn eight, it's still just one one and it's the still the default position is Strider winning, so not surprised to see him uh you know, kind of clamp down into the uh, health screen. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate that this game seems a little bit of an anti climax. But you know, it was the third game, so I wanted to do it live.
not the most exciting uh, <laughs> game ever now, is it? Like, you know, Strider taking a lot of time to make sure he doesn't do anything wrong. Um, well, having said that, <laughs> that was a dodge without dodge, rather than a dodge with dodge, so... Oh, it's because he was doing a blitz with this guy. Okay. That makes sense. And he gets the knockdown. And he gets the removal. And not only was it a player, it was a white. So... Now he's got... Oh, okay. See, like, things like this confuse me, because I actually quite love the idea of putting two zombies onto this guy. Um, but he didn't. Now, obviously, if the tree stands up, it's great having two, and then you just dodge your own or two, of course. But, I don't know. I'd have just put them both on this guy, and then dodged away next turn anyway. Had a guy free for certain. Man, this is uh, something, isn't it? <laughs> Frankie should be falling every turn, yeah. Two D tackle or three D? No, that's that's surely wrong, Robbie. I'm sure three D mighty blow is better than two D tackle for a moment. I guess it depends. No, depends whether it's got block or not. I mean, if you're hitting a block, it depends if you're hitting a blodger or if you're hitting a dodger, right? If you're hitting a blodger, yeah, if you're hitting a blodger, then the mighty blow is better. It's still really close just with mighty blow versus, just 2D with mighty blow versus 2D with tackle is really close anyway. Because, like, you, you knock over half as much, but injure twice as much anyway, right? Yeah. He gets the strip. <laughs> and then walks away.
<laughs> well, he cast himself, going for the ball, but it goes into the crowd. It doesn't come in behind a screen of elves, which he had a pretty good chance to. Obviously, it comes that way, it's over. If it comes this way, it's got a good chance of being really bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this was the only way the scatter in the crowd went. Something approaching acceptable for Frankie. But I mean, it's still terrible, obviously. All he's got is a potato. Blitz this guy and then pick up handoff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And get something with him. It's just awful, isn't it? Okay, he's in he's in scoring range. He is in scoring range. As unlikely as it is. And so is the tackler, isn't he? He's not. I guess he no, you can't go behind him. You have to you have to have a second to score in threat. Okay, so he doesn't. So he's got two players that can possibly score. It's not easy. Let me. Hello, Corpax. Yeah, kind sir. Obviously, it's more likely to knock over with uh, with tackle, but like mighty blow is so much better for hurting. Then it makes it better to hit with mighty blow, right? Even two dice with mighty blow is like close. I think he's looking pretty bad <laughs> for the OT. Because maybe. I should be trying to hype it up as a contest, but I can't. Yeah, exactly. And tackle almost doubles your chance of a knockdown. So it's basically the same thing. Does the 1D. I'm surprised, honestly, risking his dancer. To me, that's like a way you can lose the game, right? I guess the push stopped him from scoring. And then, yeah. So the reason that he did it was the push stops him from scoring. And then he's got side steps, so he doesn't get served. And then that gives him the 2D here. Which then obviously stops him from scoring. So yeah, so it looks like it was a bit risky. It looks risky and rowdy, but actually it wasn't. It was, it was, uh, yeah, it was a three plus to get him out of range and pop the ball out, which might get you a counter score as well, right? He's got his scoring threat. So it was a three plus to, to completely nullify the score, basically, because you, you get the push and then you get the 2D as well. But I mean, this is uh, this is well possible for Frankie, like insanely. <laughs> but I really do wish he'd had this guy here. Right? If he'd had this guy here, he would have had the handoff blitz through there. But 
this is a, I mean, it should score, shouldn't it? This is an easy touchdown. I wouldn't hate <laughs> doing the dodge before the blitz. Would have failed. But honestly, I wouldn't hate the four plus dodge, right? And then push into there so you can surf the dancer. Like, I know it's stupid, but this, this is what I mean. Like, you know, it's so bad. This game is so bad for you. Oh my god, I didn't fill it. Oh my, are you shit? Are you shitting me? <laughs> like, dude, you have to fill that before you make that block. And I'll get that it's stressful and he's losing 1 0 and stuff, but like, dude, you have to fill that square before you make that block. Okay, I guess he gets to tag the scoring threat. But I, I wouldn't have tagged the score. I would have, I would have, you know, made sure I didn't have to do the dodge. Okay, so actually, to be fair, he's got no re rolls. Maybe it was okay to tag the score through. I don't know. Yeah, so he got he got the score done. Fair play to Frankie. <laughs> like it's there's so much nerves. It's an insane amount of nerves. Like. It is for me at least, so I completely understand people doing things, even though I reacted to that. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> but you know, it is horrendous nerves that I had. Yeah, it's funny that like, Strider's out bashed him as well, it's just brutal isn't it? Like, he's still got 11 players, but dead. Cool. and Kale Blitzer, he's down in player quality. This isn't what I'd call a one-turn defence. <laughs> um, Jesus. <laughs> there you go, Rolex. Yeah. He's got no rerolls. Maybe he's got no chance of the one turn anyway, honestly. <laughs> Jumping from the eagle. <laughs> It's funny, I always played drum playing tabletop, but not because of nerves or anything, just because it was fun. Honestly, going for the one turn here is how your ward answer dies, isn't it? But like, it's a pretty easy one turn. To be honest. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Having said that, I don't know what he's doing. Because I'd have the dancer here, and sidestep to here, then sidestep to here, then sidestep to here, and score with one, two plus dodge. So I really don't know what the hell he's doing here. Strider. Striderino. I guess he's just punching. I guess he's just not going for any punching. It's the only thing that makes any sense, isn't it?
Yeah, that would have been funny. Like, this is just wrong because you're not going to the side. Like, like here was obviously the best place for the dancer. Oh, I guess this gave him... Okay, this gave him more power chances, maybe. Yeah, maybe this gave him more power chances and better fills. But, man, I really like just not having to dodge at all. <laughs> I really like not having to dodge. Like, one, two, three, and then just a two plus is incredible, isn't it? But yeah, I guess this gives him... This gives him... Uh, pass to catch. This gave him, like, pals. He could have accepted a pal. So, and actually with no re-rolls, maybe that was better. Maybe that was better. Yeah, you can take the power here. You can do the handoff now. Like, it has to do the handoff now. There it is. Yeah, so that's, hmm, it's hard to say, isn't it? Be, you know, it's, it's so hard to get the pushes. But I guess, I guess Strider was right and I was wrong. Because <laughs> the, hardest, the hardest thing in that sequence is to get the pushes. So while the obvious thing was to go here and then go there and not dodge, the fact, the fact is that he could have powered at any point and then done the other fault. Whereas if I powered there and sized up to here, it gets really hard to fill all these in and use that guy, so. Yeah, maybe I was being done going for that. Especially with more rerolls, makes the pushes even harder to get, doesn't it? But I guess my way protected the dancer the most, right? My dancer was just going to have to do a 2+. plus, Whereas his dancer was going to have to, like... Um, leap. He was going to have to 3. He was going to have to do a 3+, plus with his dancer. Which, to be fair, isn't that much harder, is it? So, yeah, his way was the highest odds to score, definitely. Could get a touchback. Honestly, Frankie did well to make that 1 1 at the end of the half. So he is in with a chance. He's got his uh, white back. So he's only down in quality with this wrestler. He's up a player. If Strider gets some bad dice, plus Frankie's got the bribe so he can foul every turn. I mean, Strider can foul as well, but there's no point fouling a zombie. It's not worth the chance of the bribe failing, is it? <laughs> really? Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe he should be fouling every turn. Maybe make this a three dice, please? I think that was the pause. I think he was thinking about making a 3D. Maybe should have done. This gives him a bit more freedom of positioning afterwards, doesn't it? Well, 
I think the only way is just like massive pressure, right? He's got to make Strider roll dice and he's got to hope Strider fails some of those dice. He's got to get lucky. He has to realize that he has to get lucky as well. Like, so, I mean, he can also defend the score, right? He doesn't have to turn him over. He can defend the score here and go overtime. I feel like slamming in the ghouls is good, though. I would have slammed in the ghouls. Like, I'd be really going to try and get something here. Maybe should have hit the tree. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to mark him up. You got to mark him up and make him roll dice. You just got to. Like he's based the dodge one, which is less relevant to be based anyway, right? Like you've got to base the ones that haven't got dodge. Yeah, I'd have herped up last turn. I'd have herped up last turn. Now I might just lose um, this turn, Frankie, because I'd really want to foul this mummy if I was Strider. I mean, I really want to foul and I'm not even playing. <laughs> survives there's the ball right back here and see this is kind of fine right you can just you can just chill and keep them in front of you but I do think basing everything is, is best like not basing with a mummy is not an option for me Down. You can foul the wrestler, can't you? I guess. He's just got a base. He's just got a base, 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 base. I think. I think he needs to base, base. Hook the base, 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 and foul every chance he gets. And get like wanting to scream and stuff. 
But again, I think he's. I just think. I still think he's miles behind, right? Even though it's one one, he's not technically behind. <laughs> um, I feel like this just won't work. And again, I could be wrong, and and Frankie could be right, but uh, obviously. I don't think that, and, and he does think that, so <laughs> it is what it is. Just getting dominated by the tree. Well, again, just gets fouled, right? Fouling the tree every chance you get. Either for the tree, the money. Like somehow, a stride is fouling more than Frankie. Frankie's playing off and, you know, just blitzing something and hoping for the best. And then Strider's like, knock this guy down and gang foul him. <laughs> Which is kind of the opposite of what you'd expect, isn't it? A pretty greedy 2 plus dodge without dodge and it wasn't the foul. Gets the extra assist in. Doesn't break AV! <laughs> Frankie living a charmed life here for a moment. He's got a bribe though, BB Jock, so gang fouling a mummy is incredible, isn't it? It's good not only for your chances of winning the game, but also for the emotional damage. You've got to consider that. Like, for winning the game, fouling the tackle is a lot better, isn't it? Or a, or a goal, but, you know. There's something spe There's something just breaks inside undead coaches when you foul them on the off the pitch. <laughs> the ball is way back here. On the sidestep. Dancer. We can't really have it in the field of view though, because then it's like blimp cam, isn't it? So. Is he going to try to rush hit the tree here? No, he's going to tackle Blitz. Gets the pal. say I've liked how Frankie's played this half, but it's not over, is it? It's not over. He's still in with a shot. He hasn't lost it yet. I mean, he hasn't won it, but he hasn't lost it yet. Things can happen. I mean, if you can make Strider roll one dice, he's got a 3% chance. <laughs> so, you know, he's at least got that. Yep, he's got a. Uh, he's, so he, he killed a ghoul earlier, and the undead are on 10 at the moment. The woodies are also on 10. 
<laughs> Jim Zells, no. <laughs> Strider with as many uh, as many cars in this in this um, eleven turns as I have in five whole games. <laughs> well, thanks, Ravina. I do my best. He didn't stand up the uh, mummy, did he not? Because he didn't want to get it mighty blowed. But he knows he's going to get fouled again, doesn't he? Apparently it's not going to get fouled again, and I was a fool. Strider decides this is the turn to move up. With everybody free. It's looking real bad for them, yep. Oh, but there you go. There was a 1 in 36 that failed. Now, it wasn't a crucial one. But it is possible, right? So if you just make them make crucial ones... He's not going to get to make them make too many crucial ones, right? Unfortunately for Frankie. The position he's in, I don't think he's going to get to make them make many crucial 1 in 36s. But... Even one can fail. And then he's got a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 he should have all paced, in my opinion, much earlier. He might not even all base this turn, might he? But, again, I think he should. That's not changing. I would, I'd be all basing all the time from a while ago. And, yeah, you can get punished, right? You can, you can make a bunch of rolls and get past you. But, like, also it gives him a chance to fail those, right? Like, If you make him make three 1 in 36s, maybe he fails one of those. It's better than not giving him any, ever. You could always foul the dodger, right, with a zombie. And hope to, you could have done the foul with a zombie first. Okay, the tackler is engaged. He's going to foul the stun player and leave that guy alone. So, the dodge on the deck is immediately off the deck. For free. I wouldn't say easy. I mean, it's, it's not hard, but... <laughs> yeah, the dodger behind the... Yeah, he couldn't go anywhere, could he? I guess he could have tried to dodge him at the last turn. But the moment he's making it a 1D on the mummy, right? If he dodges him off, then he can just want 2D the mummy. So at least by keeping him there, he's stopping his mummy getting destroyed. It's a hard call to make in these kind of situations, right? Because you just think, oh, I don't want it to go wrong. And I think that's a pretty natural reaction when you're in the game, right? When you're watching it, you're like, oh, you can go for a sack here, and oh, you can do this here, and you can do this. And like when you're watching it, you're like, oh, look at all these adventurous plays you can do. But when you're playing it, you're just like, oh, my God, I don't want to fail. <laughs> so I think that's... I think it's natural to leave him there. But I, I like fouling this guy. Um, 
really I'm just leaving that zombie out and then fouling this guy before moving the tackler foul him before moving the tackler because the problem with putting the tackler in here is as well he gets blitzed doesn't he like after after keeping him kind of fresh all game as soon as he gets committed he's getting two dice Now it becomes a pretty easy switch. Like he did have to get the power there, I think. Did he? No, he didn't. Yeah, no, he did. He did for the assist. Yeah, he, he pretty much needed. The, oh no, he could have just not followed. But the power makes it. Yeah, the power makes it pretty, pretty much GG. Guy that he let he led up makes the screen. He just needs a two plus now, a critical two plus. No, reroll. He's got three. Obviously, he doesn't need to think about that for a second. And now he can try like a three three two. He's probably not going to reroll any of these. I guess you can walk around the screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or double rush. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, double rush. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. So you can get two dice on the ball here with a dodge and four rushes. Three reels, maybe it's better to do a dodge from this guy, right? One, two, oh no. Okay, well. Again, I think this is wrong because it's just not going to work. It's not going to be enough, right? Like, it's worked. He's got the knockdown. But, like, the end state, I don't think is doing enough to win the game. But maybe I'm wrong. He's at least probably forced a 1 in 36. Oh, do you know what he could have? He could have punched. Oh no, he's got stand firm. Disregard. Errata, errata. <laughs> 1 in 9. Reward. Well, there you go. He got a 1 in 81. Which is pretty unlucky. And you know he could have rushed there and he first, which is more risky. And he, but he could have piled there and then he could have based there and he could have based basing these guys up at the back. Kind of gives him something. Could have stood up his tackler. Could I guess could have dodged the tackler off and got it around. But I do think he's gonna have to dodge with a dancer, right? I oh, know he can just blitz him and hope for a power. So he might not have to dodge with a dancer. Is he just going to dodge? Looks like he's just dodging, doesn't it? I really like not just dodging there. You know, putting a player here, putting a player here, blitz him. If you pow, you don't have to dodge. Do anything I can to stop a 3% failure state. But, this is fine. Mm. 
You know, there's three percent there, wasn't he? At the end of the day, Frankie. If that dodge fails, there was nothing near him. He would have picked him up. He'd have been down the field, and he could have won that game. But the, that, that's why I preferred, you know, the four rushes and a dodge, or three rushes and two dodges, because then you've got much more chance of powering the dancer. Maybe kill like you've got as much chance of killing the dancer as he has of failing that dodge, right? And you've got way more chance of knocking the dancer over and giving yourself a shot. Like just got to people. It's funny because you'd think in this, people would be braver and do those things that you've got to do. That like you know you don't do in ladder and stuff. But I guess there is the element of, you know, being scared to lose and stuff and the stress, etc., etc. Well, like hoping your opponent fails a one in thirty six is very, very, very rarely going to be the play. Five plus two. Yeah. And he's not going to do it. Last turn he had. Last turn he had <laughs> four rushes and a dodge for two D. So you know, like. If you're not going to do that, you're not going to 5 plus for a 1 are you? <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to 5 plus for a 1 or if you're not going to 3, 2, 2, 2, 2 for a 2D. Scott, of course, he's not going to give Frankie the chance to two to him. Yep. Yeah, tuk tuk. It's hard, like it's hard, right? I get, there's, like there's a mental, there's like a mental block element for sure, right? Like you feel stupid if it fails, and you hope that you know if you do the safe thing, then your opponent might make a mistake or you know and like. The whole, there's the whole thing that people say to beginners of, you know, let your opponent roll the dice and all that, which is obviously a wrong, but, you know, it's the thing that people hear and say. And so, like, the, all those kind of things, I guess, are building into, um, you know, people not making the right moves. But, you know, the more you play good players, the more you just have to go for those kind of things. Like, it was incredible watching Elliot in Ladder. And, you know, he would just constantly, like, not do the roles that I thought he had to do. And then his opponent would do something and he'd be in with a shot and I'd be like, oh, fair enough. But, like, you, you've got to assume that that's not going to happen when you're playing, like, Strider. You know? Yeah, yeah, it has happened a lot, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Like, it is the natural thing to do. And also, specifically with this as well, is probably most people are used to being the better player. <laughs> like, by an appreciable amount. Whereas now, they're not the best player by an appreciable amount, right? Like, nobody is, right? Like, you know. Um, so, it's really hard, isn't it? Like, you know, like, I do think... <laughs> no, no, Cosmigo, I'm playing Devo. <laughs> like, I'm not loads better than Devo, right? So... You know, um, oh, you mean like, <laughs> oh, you mean I'm not used, I'm, I'm not used to thinking I'm better than people, <laughs> whichever one it is. Uh, but you know, like, you know, like on ladder, if you're if you're eighty percent to win any given game, then you're gonna make all the safe plays and stuff, right? And you're used to being much better than the people you play. 
but you know you've got to recognize when you're playing strider the game isn't going to fall into your lap <laughs> you're not going to be able to base you know a couple of guys and hope things work out it's just not going to happen and you know like it makes you wonder how because obviously i've got a lot of experience over a lot of years some of these people might not have that same level of experience and plus i've played super league right versus loads of good players all the time whereas like you know let's say um somebody who just come from ladder or something um even ladder right most of the games then that you know you're better than than by an appreciable amount and also you don't push for wins because you save your players and stuff so it yeah, I guess it's kind of unusual for people to try to play somebody really, really good where they have to make things happen themselves. Yeah, not that many, but enough to notice. Yeah, exactly, exactly, tuk tuk, yeah. It's been a noticeable amount. Yeah, I mean, he definitely should have gone for the three, two, 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 two dice. <laughs> like, that was pretty easy chance. Like, not easy, but he had three re-rolls at the time. You sink all your re-rolls in there, hope you kill the dancer, hope you get the ball. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a one-turn chance, realistically. Like, he, he could, he's got movement seven, but realistically not. There's a sidestepper, there's a stand firm. And he's got to go for it and roll all of the dice. So uh, his best chance is timeout, right? He could get a timeout here. If he gets a timeout, there's a chance he gets the touchdown. Um, I don't think there's a chance of the one turn. Yeah. Yeah. Ghoul is movement seven. So it's technically possible to score the one turn, but you've probably got to start with a five plus dodge into a 1D that pushes the ghoul up to here, which isn't easy for a start, right? And then push him to there. And then push him to there, and then push him to there. And then he four threes through. So this was this was worse than a, a back line for Strider, but I guess he's got. Um, I guess you know it's it's better against like a riot, which is more likely to be what happens. I guess BB Pusher, I think it's called, sounds like a, There's like a there's a thing there, a board, a tabletop board would work. Hello, Lit. More games after this. Maybe, Jeff, maybe, yeah. We've still got some viewers, haven't we? BB Pusher is outdated. I mean, is it? You, it still works for, like, putting pieces on a pitch, right? Like, it doesn't matter if it hasn't got all the latest players and stuff. Yeah, you could open up a game and do hard seat, but then it's hard because then you've, you've got to roll the, you've got to roll the pushes, right? Rolling the pushes is hard. But you could do it like versus halflings. You could, you could, um, you could try versus halflings. You've always got like two or three Ds on them. You could do it versus snotlings and not sidestep, couldn't you? You could use snotlings and not sidestep. Yes, coins on a tablecloth. Yeah. Yes, you could. I mean, you could use a board. You could use... The... Oh, yeah, you could just power that guy. Yeah, you could just power him with tackle. And then blitz and push him. So it was it was vaguely possible, but... Unlikely. There were so many dice to roll. Um, so there you go. Um, 
unlucky Frankie, but um, commiserations to Frankie. Congratulations to Strider. Strider becomes the second person to get through to the quarterfinals. The, not the defending champion, but he did win the season two finals. So he's like the spiritual defending champion, if you like. Um, Strider. Yep, he was always. I thought honestly, I thought he was pretty favoured to get through from the like you know the draw. I thought he got a really, really nice draw for himself there, and I thought he was pretty favoured. But you know, Frankie caused him some troubles in the first game, um, but he he got through it. So. Big congratulations to Strider, he gets the 400 euros guaranteed and we'll be seeing him next week when we're in Montpellier, so there you go. Thanks for watching everybody, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.